Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're talking about addition and elimination reactions. These are common organic compound reactions. So we're going to start with this substance here and we're going to first look at addition reactions. We're going to add something, HCl, to this molecule. So what is this molecule? Let's see if you can name it. If you can, shout out the name or think it out loud. One, two, three, four carbons, double bond, so it is butene or but one -en. Combining with HCl, hydrogen chloride, and how does it combine? It combines by breaking this double bond, so each bond comes down here, and look how we've got a question mark. Now, what happens to the H? What happens to the Cl? Well, the H could go on that carbon, or it could go on that carbon, and the chlorine would have to go on the leftover one. But there is a rule, Markovnikov's rule, which states that the hydrogen is going to go onto the carbon that has got the most hydrogens already. So, of these, which is the carbon that's got the most hydrogens, according to Markovnikov's rule? Well, one, two, one. So the hydrogen is going to go there. And the chlorine is going to go here. There we go. So that's how we add HCl, and this was but one e And it becomes, now let's see if you can name that. Do your best. It's four carbons, single bond, so it is butane, but it's got a chlorine on the second carbon, so it is... Two chloro butane. Two chloro butane. So how easy was that? We must just make sure that when dealing with hydrogen chloride gas and not hydrochloric acid, there must be no water added to it, and then the reaction will go to the left uh, to the right from reactants to our products. Now let's demonstrate for you how this reaction occurs. Have a look at that. We've got pink marshmallows. How many have we got? Four. Each of them have got a single bond except for this one that's got a double bond and it's two hydrogen. So this chain of four pink marshmallows is this substance here. And we're going to add HCl. So let's make an HCl. That matchstick with the head is H, that is a Cl. Now notice what we're going to do. Um, let's do it here. We're going to break this bond like that. We're going to add the H to the end, so we take off the H, add it to the end, and we're going to add the chlorine to the second carbon, and look, there we've got our 2-chlorobutane. So what did we do? We broke the bond, stretched it out, pulled off the hydrogen plug, put it on there, and put our chlorine on here, and there we have marshmallow molecule showing 2-chlorobutane. Now let's have a look if we were to start with butane and we were to add water to it. Water to it. So let's go back to our marshmallows. So there is our marshmallow 
butanein. And let's get a water molecule. Let the oxygen be represented by the white marshmallow and the two hydrogens. How are we going to add it onto this? Now, I don't want to redraw it each time here, but we've got an H and an OH. The H is going to go on the one and the OH is going to go on the other. What is Markovnikov's uh, rule? The H must go onto the carbon that has got the most hydrogens already. So it's not going to be that one, it's going to be that. So when we add water, we're going to get H, and here we're going to get OH. And that is what we going to is going to be our molecule when we add water. So what are we going to get? What do we call a substance with an OH on carbon 2? Well, it's an alcohol. So it is going to be butanol. But it's going to be butan. Which carbon is it on? 2 all. Butan, no. Butan, to all. Butanol. And this is again an addition reaction because we've added water. Well, let's show it first how we do that. So here's our butan in. We're going to break the bond. We're going to add an OH there and an H somewhere on here. And so one, two, three hydrogens. There's our white marshmallow. And there is butane to ol. An addition reaction. We added a water to it. What if we were to add hydrogen to it? To a but one e Well, Can we apply Markovnikov's rule? Well, not really, because H2 is a symmetrical substance. So it doesn't actually matter on which of these we add. We're going to add a hydrogen and a hydrogen. And when we add hydrogens to it, it's going to become just a straight 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon alkane, which is going to be butane. Okay. But what if we were to add a chlorine to our original butanein? Chlorine, Cl2. So let's get rid of that. Again, we have broken this bond and we're going to add a chlorine and a chlorine. Right, so it's butane with two chlorines. It's a halo alkane. How do we name it? We're going to call it 1, 2 dichlorobutane. One carbon, two carbon, di meaning there's two of them, dichlorobutane. So there's our four substances which we've added. Now, folks, we could do the exact opposite. This is a reversible reaction. We could go from that backwards, or we could go, in each of these cases, we could reverse the reaction. Now, let's give you the names of this type of reaction. Right, I'm going to, first of all, rub those out, and let's give the name of the reaction. So, within the category of addition reactions, we can add and hydrogen and a chlorine. So, what kind of reaction is this? It is a hydrohalogenation reaction. So, when we add hydrogen and a halogen, we get a hydro, notice the O, halogenation reaction. 
when you add a hydrogen and a chlorine, a hydrohalogenation reaction. Now, just as a matter of interest, if we went from the reverse to that, we call it, and I want to draw it, we call it a dehydrohalogenation reaction when we have the reverse reaction. Now, to favor this forward reaction, we must just make sure that our reactants have no water. The reverse reaction, it must have heat and sodium hydroxide present for the reverse reaction, for this to go from having the chlorine and the hydrogen, the chlorine here and the hydrogen here, we can go from a single bonded hydrocarbon, we can reverse it back to its original, or it's a, a double bonded form, but then we have to have sodium hydroxide plus heat. Okay, when we go in the forward way, adding water, adding water, we call it a hydration. Now, look at hydra, water. Hydro, hydrogen. So, adding water, and when it's an addition reaction, adding water, it's a hydration. And when it's the reverse way, losing water, it's a dehydration reaction. If we're adding only hydrogens, it is a hydrogenation. A hydrogenation reaction. And if we gain the reverse way and removing hydrogens, it is a dehydrogenation reaction. And if we're just adding a halogen, it's halogenation. Reaction. And if we're taking off a halogen and making a double bond, it's a dehalogenation reaction. So we can go this way and go from a double bond to a single bond by adding things, but we can remove, pluck those two from it, and go the reverse way in each of these cases. In this case, adding water, we need sulfuric acid present. In this case, when we add hydrogen, we need a platinum catalyst. Going backwards, we must apply heat and pressure to remove the hydrogen and reform a double bond. And if we're adding chlorine, there must be no water present. Normally, the reaction occurs in a non-polar solvent like carbon tetrachloride. There we go. Those are the various types of reactions and their reverse reactions. Now, whenever we're losing something, it is called an elimination reaction. And the elimination reaction is named yeah, dehydrohalogenation, dehydration, dehydrogenation, dehalogenation. So the reverse reaction is a D reaction in front of it, the prefix. And that signifies the reverse of the Ford reaction. Now let's show you the reverse reaction, a dehydration reaction with our molecule here. So we've got the OH and we're going to lose an H. So let's pluck off the O, pluck off the H. Here's our bond. Let's rejoin it to this final carbon. So there's our carbon, 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 carbon. Here is the double bond. And here was our water. 